I'm recording on my end. I'm recording as well. Mike feels all weird. Uh, it's because you haven't been in front of it in forever. Yeah, it's like when you, you have relations for over the first time in a long time. You're like, do I know how to do this? And then you get done and you're like, oh, that's right. I never knew how to do this. <laughs> yeah. A minute later, your wife's like, nope, you don't know how to do this. <laughs> but I don't know. Right. I, I enjoyed I it. always bad at this. <laughs> I'm going to oh, take a nap. <laughs> yeah, we just got done talking for like an hour, so I don't know what I have for a gold open. Um. Ooh, actually, you know what? Ooh. Ooh. You're going to watch Yellow Jackets. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I am. I yeah. am. I'm going to watch it uh, probably this weekend. I'll prob- I think that is probably when I'm going to do it. Yeah, I would try to kind of salvage it a little bit too like a two episode a night kind of thing i should savor it i wouldn't like i wouldn't binge like all of them over the weekend if you can help it i I think i did i'm i'm really prone to like crashing through yeah i'm i'm about two like two episodes is all i can do i mean if i keep going like three four like i stop paying attention yeah no i'm yeah i'm not I'm very much prone to doing that. Do you feel I, like- I actually prefer the Netflix model of like, watch it all, sit yeah. down and watch it all. Uh, I'm more Disney Plus. Like, hey, give me like an episode a week. Like, I want that like, you know, TV guide, must see TV kind of feel. Because otherwise, it's like you're like, hey, did you watch this yet? I'm like, I watched two episodes. Like, I finished it all the first <laughs> night. That's yeah. That's you just described our exact conversation. Yeah. About like Witcher. Like the Witcher. Yeah. yeah. You're like, <laughs> hey, I finished it in a weekend. I'm like, well, I'm going to start it in a week. <laughs> Are you done yet? Well, we've watched two episodes. It's been two weeks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I, think I mean, just, I, I think the only I think you like that just because like if it's week to week, then that way you and I are on the same page. Like Boba Fett, you yeah. and I oh, are yeah. on the same page. And and so and and so you feel like. Well, he's not ahead of me, so we could talk about it. Well, and I feel bad, too, because by the time I get to the end of it, it's already been like a month. I'm like, all right, so let's talk about Witcher. You're like, yeah, it's kind of like last month's news. <laughs> I'm all talked out about it. <sighs> Who are you talking to? Nobody. Oh, I'm hungry. Everybody else. <laughs> but no, Yellow Jackets is good. That would be... Because did you ever watch Lost? No. Um... I just saw one of your kiddos walk by. I was like thinking, I'm like, I bet your kids would like it. Uh, actually, that that one is the one that's that's watching it with with Amanda. Nice. And I think you and Amanda were because it's '96 is what takes place like in the past. I feel like that's like your guys' real house. Well, okay, so they were watching it in the in the living room uh, the other night. Last night they were watching it in the living room, and I was sitting here in the office. And I heard, and like I was listening to the music, I was like, "Is that Prodigy? Nice." Yeah. Well, you were held by a fire starter, twisted fire starter. Uh, Papa Roach covers that song in some of their concerts. Really? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so how they got you? a bad rap because they came out with that song "Smack My Bitch Up." Mm. I mean, it was the nineties. Well, then they put out the well in the music video. The it's like a guy beating the shit out of a woman. And at the and end, it's, it's shot like, like first, and it's shot like first person. Is the end like you know like domestic abuse is not okay? Did they put that? I mean, I, at the honestly, end? I don't remember because that video came out like twenty years ago. Yeah, is that why you beat women, Richard? But I mean, it's, <laughs> it's basically like the guy, like the video is like if if a piece of shit had a GoPro strapped to his head. Like yeah. that's how the video is kind of shot. Well, that's kind of like uh, I mean, you think about '90s music videos like Jeremy by Pearl Jam. Like everybody. At- well, you know, I mean, that was that was the time, Sean, when, like, uh, when people when 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 there was a budget for a music video. Yeah. And so, in order to get you know eyeballs on it, like you know, you, you had to do something. You had to do something provocative, and you had to, it's you true. know, uh, it was kind of like a short film. Yeah, really, oh yeah, yeah, you know. Well, I a think, lot of I think I think you know the the uh, the uh, the the main example I can think of is Thriller. I mean, Thriller was essentially a very short horror movie set to music. Yeah, I think probably up through like maybe what like two thousand five, maybe two thousand eight is when like the music video kind of died. Mm-hmm. 
because then it made me sad. Yeah. Oh, I love I loved music I love, videos. Oh, I loved music videos so much. Because the mid nine mid two thousands, they started just being like concert videos. Uh-huh, like all music uh-huh. videos was the song, but then like you know they're at like a, a show kind of thing. It's like man, I want like give me like a story. And it's like that shit yeah. costs too much money. Well, because I felt like this the 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 music video for for a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to read into the subtle nuances of like the lyrics of a song or what the meaning of a song is, but you watch a music video and you pick up all that, you pick up all that subtext from watching the video. And so you watch the video and you're like, okay, I know what the song's about. Now I will say that sometimes, and I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but there were times where the music video and the song were giving complete were giving separate messages yeah that that were that weren't really related to each other um but like you listen to the, the song smack my would, bitch up and you're yeah, like music- what's this song about like i don't really understand and then you watch the video you're like oh okay i get oh, it now <laughs> that's going to leave a mark yeah on her face mm-hmm. smack my bitch up smack we're talking my about Papa Roach. they have a song called revenge in japanese where Hits his ass with a bat, makes it look like silly putty. Revenge in Japanese. I think I'm revenge in Japanese. I really think so. Which I don't know why they called it revenge in Japanese, but on the album they just called it revenge. It was actually a two part song. There was a song about like the girl getting abused by her, I think it was her husband. And the second one, Richard, she beats his ass with a bat. What's Had Japanese enough of about her man's that? rage? I don't know. I don't know why they called it revenge in Japanese, but you know, you know what they should have had. They should have put that in Kill Bill. Would have been a perfect fit. Yeah. And then there's your music video. You just show Kill Bill. Man, I was somebody was asking about like they said like man I want to go back to the '90s like I want to go back to like o two o three like if I could Ooh. go back in time the and year remember, I would go back to. Do you remember music videos? If a music if there was a if there was a song that was on a movie soundtrack. Then characters from the movie would be in the music video. Yeah, or they do like nice little cuts of the movie. Like that's how you really got kind of like your trailer of movies because uh-huh. they'd always come out like a month before it came out. Uh huh. Or it would be uh, a, a a separate story involving the characters from yeah. the music video that would tie in to the movie, kind of, sorta. Yeah. Uh, oh, so good. You should ask your kids like if they've seen a music video like in the last like six months. Oh, pro- oh, I guarantee they haven't. No, but like I, like I said, nobody makes nobody makes music, music videos. Don't get made anymore. They still make them. They just throw them on YouTube and they just kind of die in the ether. Oh, that's true. I mean, they're out that's there. True. Like apparently, uh, as we talked about this, I, I listened to some the lead singer of Asking Alexandria. And essentially, like, what the studios are for them now are just, like, loan sharks. Mm. And so they take that money to, like, make the record, maybe do a little bit of the tour, and then, like, some music videos. And I'm not you sure know the if they last. Are. What's the last music video that you can remember that, that like, had been made? I, the last one I can think of, off just off the top of my head, the last music video that I remember seeing where, hey, this is a... This is a video that the artist is in that helps, you know, support or is complimentary to the song. And that was uh, that Hello by Adele. Oh, it was like all it. it was all it was all black and white. It's black and white. Just standing in front of a phone booth, I think, at one point. The last one that I can think of, there's two I can think of I remember seeing specifically. Because even the new, like, like huge Papa Roach fan, like their last ones, they're – they're not really like story videos. It's more them singing in like a environment, but they had one come out called help, which had a bunny in it, which was awesome. Okay. Like a dude in a bunny outfit. But the last one that like left an impression on me was the Ozzy Osbourne one where it goes back to him in the hotel. Like that's the last like oh, story yeah. based one I saw. And I'm like, this is like, yeah. this is awesome. And it had been out for like three or four years before I saw it. Cause you mentioned it. You're like, Oh my God, you need to see this. And I saw it. And I'm like, this is great. Like, this is this is what we need more of yeah, in this world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was that's right. He did. Yeah. Do you think like I know this is a really long gold open, but do you think like a <laughs> like a uh, TV station like MTV could come out and be like, listen, we are just doing music videos. 
Do you think it would work? Do you think it'd be mm. enough of a nostalgic? I feel? think no. However, I think that if MTV decided, hey, we're gonna create a YouTube slash Twitch channel slash live stream where they run the exact where they run the same format that they did, you know, in like the nineties where they air music videos and then they have VJs and they do interviews and you know, all that shit in, instead of, instead of actually putting it on cable, they say, Hey, we're going to live stream on YouTube and on Twitch. And then we'll chop up that content and then put it on YouTube as videos. I think that like basically like the G4 model, like what G4 is doing mm. right now. How's that doing? I haven't heard. I've watched like a little bit of it, but I mean, I, I, tu- I, I tune into the Twitch streams. I mean, they, they usually run a on app. Av- like whenever I check the, check the numbers on, I mean, they're averaging like 2,500 on Twitch, like concurrent viewers on mm. top of, uh, and, and I know they simulcast on YouTube. I haven't, I don't know how, how, like what the audience is on YouTube. Um, yeah, some they of these- have, Attacks are like twenty seven, ten to twenty seven thousand, eight thousand. I mean, they have. I don't know. How, I don't. I don't even know how many subscribers they have. Uh, almost half a million. Yeah, almost half a million subscribers. Average. Yeah, like you said, averages. I mean, some of them are. Oh shit! There's one here that was one video here popped off at almost one hundred fifty thousand views. Nice. Yeah, that's where I'd like to go back. Like o two o three. You flip on MTV. Flip on G four. I don't know, simpler time. But I mean, you could run, I mean, you could have, yeah, you could, but yeah, like I said, you know, you simulcast on YouTube and Twitch, you chop up that content, put it out as videos, you'd have far less overhead because you're not paying for, you're not having, you're not paying to uh, broadcast, you're basically just paying, you know, like your, you know, studio costs, like, you know, basically to produce, produce a show. Which now with all the technology we have, that's dirt cheap. A lot cheaper than it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but I guess here's I guess here's the thing. If if they did that, like let's say MTV decide like they said, hey, we're putting out uh we're gonna have a live stream, YouTube and Twitch, would artists make videos? Because well, that's I mean, what that's what it would kind of come down to is if 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 artists didn't make music videos, then what the fuck would they show? Well, they're still making music videos. I mean, every single for bands and stuff, there's a music video out for it. But like you think about some of the independent bands, like if they had like a headbangers ball like it is today, and they did more mm-hmm. of a like mm-hmm. submit your independent music video, like that would be awesome to see like just these little bands that nobody knows about. Yeah, I'd even wear a gown like Kurt Cobain because it's a ball and you wear a <laughs> gown to a ball. That's right. That's right. R.I.P. Rest in power, King. Yeah. Although I'm a bigger uh, Chains fan, if I had to say. Well, nobody asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that sad note of death, let's start a show. <gasps> let's do a show. What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm John. And today, we are once again speaking the language of romance, Sean. And we've come to snuff the rooster. Oh, yeah. Oh, Uh, wait. Nobody asked me to sing. (laughs) They never ask me, but I do it anyway. Because I'm what's known as obnoxious (laughs) so for today sean i'm a so you're an athlete i would i would say between the two of us you are the more you're the more athletic (sighs) richard is this where you tell me i need to lose weight like my wife did man no did she tell you you need to lose weight 
I mean, I know I need to lose some weight. Like, no, I'm a- but I mean, did she overtly say it? Did she say, "Oh, it looks like somebody's looking a little chunky monkey," and then grab like the sides, like no. grab like the sides of your of your body and go like? <laughs> so I, I definitely like I've probably put on like this this like I would winter start playing prodigy. If that happens. <laughs> <laughs> so like I've I've put on like ten pounds this winter. Like I guarantee it. Like I should be like 172, 175, and I'm pushing a buck eighty five. And I'm getting ready for bed and I take off my shirt and like I see it and I'm like, oh, I just feel gushy. And I'm <laughs> waddling. You know, I'm doing that sad waddle to the bathroom and she's like, you know, this winter's been a little rough on both of us. We should try to watch what we're eating. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. And I was like, are you talking to me? <laughs> and so then I went downstairs, Richard, and I ate a whole stick of butter. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I put the gun in my mouth. Yeah. And then I well, ate it because I was hungry. Might as well be a bullet. <laughs> No, I put like a, a every two hour reminder on my phone that my wife thinks I'm fat and I need to lose weight. <laughs> so if I see anything like I'm like, man, I'm hungry, and it pops up an alert. It's like, no, I'm uh-uh. not. Uh-uh. <laughs> you should factual. stand for that. Well, I tried to run after, her, but I got winded. Makes sense. <laughs> I go have an heart attack. <laughs> Quick, grab a Snickers. <laughs> Well, I just, I guess I just mean when I say that you're the more athletic of the two of us, I'm saying that you were in a sport. I did. I played baseball. I was not. I don't know if you know this, Richard, but when I played baseball. Really? Oh, hang on. Hang on. Let me get, let me get settled in. What happened when you were in in baseball, Sean? My senior year, I hit what they call a walk-off home run to win our first game of the the year. This is the first time I've ever heard this story. How oh, have you yeah. not shared it before? Man, it was, it was, I died that day, Richard, because my life's been downhill ever did since. Did you, did you hit the lights and then the, sh- and then the shower of sparks came down while you were running the bases? We tried to find the baseball, Richard. We couldn't because it exploded. I hit it so hard. Was there, uh, did, did a weird, uh, like symphonic band, like strike up as you were running the bases? They did out of nowhere. Like this truck pulled up. Yeah. And my dad came out of the cornfield and says, Hey son, can we have a catch? I'm like af- after I run the bases, dad, what are you doing in the corn? He's like meth, Get son. Get out of there. Meth. <laughs> <laughs> dad, that's not good for you. I'm going back in now. <laughs> Hopefully, when I come out, I'll love you more. <laughs> but yeah, I played. Uh, I played a little basketball my freshman year, but I played I baseball all four years. I played um, the Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time when I was nice. in high school. Did you not hit competitively a, though? Did you hit a game-winning sword strike in that game? I did not. No, I did. However, um, pull. Uh, retrieve the master sword and save the land of Hyrule from the evil Ganon. Nice. So really so out of our that. two stories, like mine was selfish. You sacrificed yourself for the greater good. I did because apparently in that timeline, uh, I died. Have you ever heard this? Have you, have you heard this? So this is a weird tangent to go on and it has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about. However, Legend of Zelda, right? There is a th- there is apparently a timeline that connects all of the games together because whenever I don't know if you've I don't know how many Legend of, of you're fine. I don't know how many Legend of Zelda games you've played, Sean, but it always seems like they're very not connected. Okay. You're Link and you wake up and you wake up somewhere and then it's, oh, you got to go save Princess Zelda. And you're like, okay, whatever. And then you do it. And then the next game happens and you do the same thing. You wake up and, hey, you got to go save Princess Zelda. But apparently. Wait, who's Princess Zelda? I thought the character you're playing was Zelda. I'm going to disconnect this fucking. <laughs> uh, apparently there is a timeline that explains all of it of of why link 
doesn't remember things happening from one game to the next. Okay. And it all starts at that Ocarina of Time N64 game because there's they say at that point the timelines diverge and that Link actually dies in one of the timelines, that you die at the end of the final battle. Huh. That seems too complicated for a game. I yeah, I mean it's I it it feels it feels like a big stretch. I I don't know. Yeah, anytime but, you deal with like diverging timelines, like you know they got to come back together because like we've got this like just too crazy. Let's get yeah, it all back exactly. on one timeline. I would I would recommend if anybody's curious about it, like go on YouTube and watch a video on it because they can explain it far far better than I could. Yeah. But just to get to, but to give the gist. The games go kind of in a through line until Ocarina of Time and then the time and then it kind of splits where there's one there's a scenario where Link lives and there's a scenario where Link dies and a, apparently at the current game we are in the timeline where Link dies. Hmm. The Link Link dies like in the game that came out 20 years ago. But like I said, there's there's people that can explain it way better than I could. But I digress. Sean, you said you're competitive. I found a sport. I don't know if it's a sport. Maybe it's a sport. I don't know. But they have, there's, uh, they have, they have leagues on it. This was on ESPN, Sean. Ooh, was it on the Ocho? It was, I don't know if it was on the Ocho because I don't watch ESPN. It was on ESPN 3. Oh, I think that's like their online one. They did come up with like a ESPN Ocho, like from Dodgeball. Oh, nice. The Ocho. Nice. The Ocho. Uh, it's so. a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off. <laughs> uh, I guess you could call this an eSport. <clears throat> okay. But I saw this story, and this made this, this put – I feel like this is kind of like the episode we did about death where I read something, and then, I, and then I'm like, well – what are there what are there other types of you know this thing and then I go end up going down a rabbit hole and find a bunch of other stuff <clears throat> but Sean did you know that there is competitive excel spreadsheets uh for some reason I feel like I've heard that like people have made like turn based games out of excel spreadsheets no no this isn't this isn't like somebody making a game out of a spreadsheet. Oh, God. This are is, you crunching numbers? These are people competing with spreadsheets. Man, like, there's Linda in accounting, and here she goes. Click, 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 click. Oh, God, did you see how she multiplied those six columns? That's ex- I feel like that's I, – I need to watch it. I, I did not watch it. I ran out of time before I could watch it. But this is the Financial Modeling World Cup. Oh, man. You know, like, you see some people that work in Excel. They can do some wizardly, like, top-notch stuff in it. Yes, apparently I mean, so. Richard, if it's probably sad to say how many businesses in America run exclusively off Excel. That's like, database? Nope. We have Excel. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The Financial Modeling World Cup will be held this weekend entirely in Microsoft Excel. And the finals, quarterfinals, semifinals, and final match will all be broadcasted live on ESPN3. Posers are like, and for the finals, we're going to go to Google Sheets. Ah! <laughs> Uh, no, everyone's playing for a total prize, a, pro- a purse, Sean, of $10,000. Oof. Funded by Microsoft. That way you can take that 10 grand and scrub the internet of all the videos so people don't make fun of you. (laughs) The Financial Modeling World Cup consists of 128 participants from each region of the world. The qualification round began on November 13th, moved through various stages in December, and finished up in January. Well, we're here with contestant number 37, Bob. Bob, can you tell us how you got here? Well, uh, 
what I did was, is, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> I was at home and uh, I was crunching some numbers for fun. Like I've got a garden that I like to do things with. So I got, <laughs> I got a spreadsheet that I put some stuff together, <laughs> together and it's it a started with story. seeds and then, uh, <laughs> and then everything just exploded. You know, you know how it is with Excel. You just go crazy. And, uh, <laughs> and my wife who left me was like, why don't you just compete in it? And, you know, funny enough, I found this and I won. Lindsay, I miss you. <laughs> I that miss was, you uh, so much. <laughs> that was contestant number 37, Bob. The Financial World Modeling World Cup takes place every year, pitting the world's top financial modelers against each other. Yes, there is even a ranking system. Oh, man. You know, like, I want to know the trash talk with that. Like, somebody comes up as, like, it's Steve, and Bob's like, and goes up to Bob's like, Bob, I'm going to take these cells, and I'm going to shove them straight up your ass. Dude, you know what they should have? They should have like the uh, the moments like 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 in pro wrestling. We're we'll like, I'm gonna take your fucking Excel sheet. You know what, Steve? You can't concatenate two strings together to save your life. <laughs> cell one, more like I'll meet you in cell one. <laughs> oh, oh! He like breaks a laptop over his head, and everybody's like, Jesus. You know steroids. Like aren't gonna help with this. Like that, it'll help with other stuff, but it doesn't. It doesn't work for this. No, it helps my eyesight. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that might help. <laughs> but I break computers. Uh, he's going to sheet three. He's going to sheet three. <laughs> oh my God, he has a family. <laughs> my God, by God, I called him. <laughs> Somebody Excel. stop this <laughs> Excel has crashed Excel has crashed <laughs> uh, Dearmond Early Of Early Days Consulting Is listed as the top modeler On the FMWC Leaderboard with 11,700 points Oh damn just, sounds like a chick magnet To me <laughs> Just above Think Matrix employee Anoop Argwal Naturally, the leaderboard is formatted as a spreadsheet. I would hope so. Yeah, you would think, right? So like, yeah, we use just, this in Notepad. <laughs> yeah, that's just on brand. I made it. A, I made it a PDF. You made a what? Get out of here, you son of a bitch! Ah, uh, each round. So, so I'm gonna explain the way this works to you, Sean. Each round consists of case studies, which are provided to the contestants at the time of the event. Oh, God, they're doing math problems. <laughs> According to FMWC rules, each case study consists of a problem that's between one and five pages long with a list of questions the contestants need to solve. To move up in the game, each contestant needs to fully answer the questions as well as produce and submit financial models. In a spreadsheet. Oh. No, I need to see the W-2, Linda. <laughs> uh, did you include payroll taxes in here? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, sorry, Sam, but this is in 17 states, not three. Um, Damn it. We asked for 14 point, and this is 11 point. Mm. Is that Times New Roman? Mm, I see you went to two decimal places. We actually need you to go to four. This is oh shit. This is banking financials. Um, at least in the early rounds of the World Cup, the tone felt very much like a typical esports competition. Introductions of the players who took the competition very seriously, as well as the sort of jovial collaborative commentary from known community members that included Bill Jelen. Oh, Microsoft- shit. The Bill Jelen? Yeah. A Microsoft Damn. MVP. Sean, he goes by the name Mr. Excel. Oh, you know he's serious. Right? I bet that's. I bet he's got personalized plates that say that. Yeah, he probably does. Uh, Oof. You know what, Richard? Like, I would love to take a, pe- a peek at some of these guys' OneDrive. I bet the stuff they have on there. Oh, my Excel would, you, would, would you- go to six sheets, if you know what I mean. <laughs> What what do you mean? I'd get a boner. Oh, because your penis is. <laughs> oh, um. Would you? Okay, so obviously this had already this is already aired. So would you like me to go ahead and spoil the uh, 
Or do you want to watch the link yourself? Oh, I need to watch this myself. No, feel free to spoil me because I don't okay. know if I could take the anticipation watching. I might have a little heart attack. Uh, in the end, Andrew Nagai edged Michael Jarman, disappointing the Jarmy's army that followed <laughs> that followed Canada's entrance. Sean, Andrew Nagai is also known as the end goat. Richard, these guys are more popular than us, and they're just good at Excel. And all they do is fucking Excel. Like, I Brian, can see that. Do you not like, read this? And you're like, what am I doing with myself? Yeah. Like, I can see, like, being a little rock star at your business if you're really good at Excel. But, like, to be a legit rock star outside of a business at a competition because you're good at Excel. Right? You fucking kick open. The, like, you're good at Excel, and that gives you, like, the car blanche to, like, kick open the doors to like a gymnasium and be like, what up bitches? And everybody's like, ah! yeah. Jarmy's <laughs> army goes to a strip club and he's just throwing out Excel sheets all over the place. And fucking everybody calls you the end goat. Yeah. Uh, a clearly. Oh, um, the final pitted the two against each other in what was described as a heroes of might and magic competition where one fictional nation sent soldiers, knights, and archers to conquer the other. A clearly disappointed Jarman was unable to find a flaw in his model by that final gun, allowing Nagai to overwhelm him 734 to 280. Oh, damn. That's a lot more now, extra rows. Well, I think it's... Uh, oh, so it's out of a total 1,000 points available for each side. Oh, damn. That's a spanking. He's um, like, end goat. <laughs> more like, no goat. <laughs> <laughs> it's... um, Yeah, so I, I think you have the same reaction that I did when I read this. I'm like, how, how are... These guys do, ex like, apparently do, like, math problems in Excel really well... And they're fucking rock stars. And like they're rock stars because they're good at Excel. Like, what am I doing with myself? Yeah. Well, I mean, like this is, I mean, you think about like, I'm guessing this is their career. Like this is the job that they do. And so they're like, they love their like day work so much that at night they're like, you know what? I'm going to fucking show some other noob up. He's like in goat more like noob goat because I'm the best Excel fucker in the world. Sean, I'm watching the YouTube clip of the of the finals. Sean, this video has 300,000 views. Richard, I've said it before, and this just confirms that we obviously live in a simulation. 300,000 fucking views. Oh my god! And I'm, there's oh oh see because this was this was live streamed. So now I'm looking at the live chat and I'm seeing a bunch of people that are like and go and <laughs> So people aren't even watching it. Ironically, they're actually watching it because they like it. Yeah. Oh, Richard. You know when we started tonight, you're like, you know, I'm gonna make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> and we talked about how I can't sing. My taste in music's horrible. I'm fat. And now there's somebody who's good at Excel that's more popular than me on the internet. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, Sean, I will make you feel good about yourself because obviously I, I you know, they say it takes what? It takes 10,000 hours to, to 100,000 hours to be a 10,000 hours 10, to be 000. a master. Yeah. 10,000 hours to be a master of something. Okay. Now I can, I have, I have a couple lists of other let's say alternative uh, sports and or competitions. And maybe one of these will strike your fancy and you'll be like, I could do that. And then you're you like could be mind the sweeper. No, 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 no. But you could be, you could be the world champion at something. Okay. If you Let just hear put in a little work. Okay. You know, the bad thing is like some of these, you're like, well, I'm good at that. And it's just like, whenever you play games online and you get beat up by a 12 year old, you're like, <laughs> Nope, never mind. Get I wonder if like N Goat was like get fucked noob. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you send your army to come suck this dick? <laughs> um Okay, Sean, so let's so I'm gonna get like I said, I, I I have a list of other slightly different, not mainstream sports. Okay. Um how do you think you would be 
How do you think you would fare at the Worm Charming Championship? Hmm. You know, Richard, when I was young, I always wanted to start a pet store that specialized in worm farms. And I'd call okay. it, I've got worms. <laughs> <laughs> and then there'd be an adjoining restaurant that would that no one would eat at. Charming uh, worm. Worms are, like, I don't mind worms. They're kind of cool. Like, once you realize it's not a, like a baby snake, then they're fun. Right? Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, so this competition lasts 30 minutes. The contestants use whatever techniques they can think of, including poking the ground with pitchforks and playing the bongos to raise as many worms as they can to the surface of their designated section. Hmm. I feel like that's more of a luck based thing. Like you got to be more of like somebody who can be like, oh, there's worms right there. That's my spot. The current world record was set by a 10-year-old girl who managed to raise, in 2009, she managed to raise 567 worms. Damn. 567,000? No, 567. In 30 minutes. That's pretty good. Now she lives on an island she owns that's called Worm Island, and she's a billionaire. (laughs) And now she attracts sea serpents that she's using to build an army. Yeah. She's got a podcast called I've Got Worms, and it gets 10 million (laughs) views a day. (laughs) Do you want to know my secrets? Well, I won't tell you, but my my serpents of the sea will eat your soul. And she keeps track of it all on an Excel spreadsheet. (laughs) Um, No, she's not an Excel expert, so she just uses Notepad. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, Sean, how about this one? Okay. So maybe worms aren't your thing. However, you could, you could participate in the bee wearing competition. Oof, big no on that. I think I have a slight allergy to bees. Oh, oh, that one's, that's not going to work. Yeah. Ah, like I get stung once. I'm probably okay. But if I put that on and get stung more than once, then, you know, the article is it. The article isn't B world champion. It's unknown podcaster dies from venoms of bees for doing something (laughs) stupid. Uh, Contestants compete to see who can hold the most live bees on their body. Well, I mean, actually I might do pretty good about that because as my wife has told me, there's a little bit more body mass. In 2011, there were only two people who registered for the event. Oh, well, I mean, if we did, we'd have a 50-50 shot of winning. Wearing nothing but shorts, goggles, and nose plugs. Uh, That feels like a kink at that point, right? Like, if you have bees hanging on your naked body. Uh, 42-year-old Wang Dalin and 20-year-old Elsie Kongjiang Stood each stood on a scale and used a queen bee to attract as many regular bees on their body as possible within one hour. I'm going to sting you. Well, I'm not, because if I did, then I'd die. But I'm thinking about it. In the end, it was Dolan who managed to beat out Kong Jang by attracting 26 kilograms of bees onto his body. Oof. What's that in pounds? Because I don't know what kilograms. Um, 26 well, kilograms? Uh, uh, well, okay, so the... Uh, oh, shit, Richard. That's 58 pounds. 58 pounds of bees. Yeah. That's a lot of bees. That is a lot of bees. I want to know where they get all the bees. Because I always hear that the bees are disappearing. Where are all these bees coming from? They're going to this competition. That's how you make money. You don't sell tickets to people. You sell tickets to the bees. Yeah. I really want to do like a bee farm. Like have a couple hives. Oh, I agree. I heard it's really, really difficult to get them to take off though. Yeah, I heard once you but what, I heard once you get them established, then it 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 they're good and it kind of self sustains. Mm-hmm. But yeah, getting it getting it kind of like up off the ground is is a little rough. But if if it's just if it's just personal use, like I wouldn't want to you know have a bunch of hives and then try and sell honey. Like that seems like way, that seems like a lot. I'm trying to see like so a deluxe Beehive kit is 147 bucks. Here's a 10 frame one for like 250. Where do you get the bee from though? Does it come with a bee? I think you got to order the bee. 
I had I, 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 I had a friend that was like I have I have a friend that's like really that's like really into it. And he's like constantly, you know, talking about like having to, you know, move like move queens and around and stuff like that. Richard, I don't know if um, I should click on this site though. It's bees and the D. Don't don't do that. No, that's I clicked. You it. know what? You know what? Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say go ahead. You you did. You already did it. I don't know why. You, uh, the world record is currently set at thirty nine point five kilograms, or approximately three hundred and fifty thousand bees. Damn. So you could do that. So Richard, I think you can buy. I don't know. I don't know if this is right. You can buy a hundred plus queen bees for thirty one bucks. See, that's not terrible. Yeah. I yeah, I, I think th- I think that the the uh like the financial commitment is fairly is fairly low. It's just that like the the prospect of your hive dying off is can get can get kind of high. Cause it's all about, you know, like you gotta put it like you got to put it somewhere that there isn't that they're not going to have like a lot of competition. So they're allowed to thrive a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's got to be, you know, ample, obviously ample vegetation and stuff around for them. Like a lot of flowers and stuff like that. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a hundred queen bees or a hundred bees plus a queen. It's probably a hundred plus. That's what I would think. So yeah, well under 300 bucks, you're, you're set up. Okay. Okay, Sean. Now this one, this, this, this is something, this next one is something that I don't think I would do, but maybe you would get a kick out of it. I'm I'm not sure. I don't know how, I don't, how good are you at chess? Uh, I've never played in my life. You've never played a game of chess in your yep. entire life. I don't even know the rules. Like I know the idea, but like if you sat wow. me down in front of a chess board and said, all right, play, I couldn't tell you. We should play chess sometime. I've always wanted to kind of learn, but it's one of those that like, as years go on, it's like, man, like just a big learning curve. I would totally teach you how to play chess. I next, you know what? The next time that you and I are in person, I will show you how to play chess. Perfect. Cause once you want understand- YouTube videos, well, I'm like, like once you know, like where, once you know how the pieces move, then all the, everything else after that is just strategy. And there's like established strategies too, right? There's yes, there's definitely established strat moves and strategies and stuff like that. But once you understand where how the pe- how each piece moves, then all everything else is just strategy. Mm. Um so Sean, so this combines this is a hybrid sport. This combines the skill of chess also with the skill of boxing. This is oh, chess. Yeah, this is chess boxing, Sean. Oh, is this the one where you play chess for like five minutes and then box for like two? Yes. Okay. Alternate. So, so, so it's broken down into, I think 12 rounds and it, and it's half chess, half boxing and you alternate. So you do a three minute game of chess. And then as soon as that's over, then you spend three minutes in the ring, punching each other in the face. Then you go back to chess, then back to boxing, then back to chess. I have heard of this. So the, so the way you win obviously is by knockout or checkmate. Yeah. Or so this is where we get, we get in goat to take on Muhammad Ali. I, I, I feel like this would be an interesting sport to watch but I think that it would only be interesting, like at round seven. Yeah. Well, because one of those things like, where like they move the piece then the wrong way. Because everybody's like punch drunk, and then they're like, "Yeah, okay, we're gonna play chess now. I'm gonna move this piece on my nose, and then the king will go on my head." Okay, I'm gonna ding, take ding, round eight. Punch, punch, punch. I want to take this pawn and do an L. No, that's not how that. Whatever. Whack, whack, whack. No, we're in the <laughs> we're in the chess part. Whack, whack, whack. <laughs> I mean, I think, I don't know, like in a way that would be kind of therapeutic because say you're playing chess with somebody and then you fuck up and they end up like taking your bishop and you're super pissed about it. You're like, God damn it. Oh, I'm so mad. And then you get in a ring and then you punch him in the face and then you yeah. feel better. You're like, man, I wish I could punch you. Ding, ding. Oh, yeah. Here wah, 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 wah. we go. But then if you get punched in the face because they're good at both, and you go back to the chess board. You're like, I hate my life. <laughs> that's a good point it's a way to get doubly disappointed yeah yeah uh sean 
This next one, I think this is something that I would be good at, and I think you would be good at it too, okay? I think this is something. I think that this is a sport that the two of us could do together. Oh, I like this. Because we already got our team name. As soon as I say it, you're going to be like, oh, my God, we'll totally nail it. All right, Ray, Sean, this is in – this takes place in Finland, and this, Sean, is the World Sauna Championship. Oh, well – why do you think we'd be good at this? You just hang out. It's just it, it's just hanging out in a sauna. Yeah, but those get hot. You get sweaty and gross. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You have this yeah. weird thing about being dirty. Have you ever been in a sauna? Yeah, I love them. I don't mind them, but I don't like like I don't want to be in them with a bunch of dudes. Like if it was me and my wife, it'd be fine. Oh. Uh. Like, if it's me and you, and I'm like, man, Richard, it's hot, and I put my hand on your leg, <laughs> and you're a little too hot and sweaty to, like, push it away because you're not, like, all there because you're a little, like, hallucinogen. He's like, wait, is he touching my leg? Wait, why is my what towel on the ground? To it. <laughs> this is what you do in Bauhaus, right? <laughs> and then I he saw w- this in a movie. What movie did you watch? <laughs> you come to, and you're trying to kiss me. I'm like, Richard, what are you doing? We're winning. Oh, yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> time for me to get my prize. <laughs> um, and this this takes place in Hanoi, Finland, or Hain- Hainola, Hainola, Finland, where every summer competitors from various countries take part in endurance contests to see who can sit the longest in a 230 degree sauna. Oof. It'd be like you actually have to have like a pretty good like lung capacity for that because it it does like just go outside when it's like super hot and humid in the Midwest and try to like run. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. I, that's why I think you and I would have the edge. Probably, yeah, because Finland isn't super humid, right? Finland is home to over 1.7 million saunas. I could see it. There is. I do like like if you get in a sauna and it's like you get super hot and then you run and jump in the pool where it's cold. And you get that like instant shock, and then you get out and you're shivering and freezing. And you run back into the sauna and warm back up. Uh, uh-huh. That's the best. The, co- the competition lasts for two days, divided into five rounds for men and three rounds for women. Every thirty seconds, a half liter of water <clears throat> is added to the sauna to keep the steam flowing and challengers must sit up straight with their thighs and buttocks on the seat. They cannot touch any surface with their hands and forearms have to be in an upright position and must stay on their knees. The person who sits the longest and is able to walk out of the sauna under their own power is declared the winner. It's one of those things. It's like, I get this, but do we have to do it naked? Like in Finland, in in 2010, one participant actually did die. I could see it. I mean, you get dehydrated. Whew. I mean, it could induce like a heart attack. Oh, this prompted organizers to discontinue the event. Okay, so no World Sauna Championship. <laughs> <laughs> now it's co-ed. I'm in. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> no, babe, I have to do it. It's like, yeah. I'm it's- representing my country. Hey, babe, it's fine. Like, I've seen you naked. I have nothing to worry about. Wait, what's that mean? Where's your sense of patriotism? Maybe you lose a little weight in that sauna, even though it's just water weight, fatty. I hate you. <laughs> uh, my <laughs> cries will make more humidity. <laughs> uh, making it worse. <laughs> um, This last one I have not read upon. I've not read on. But it is simply called the Jungle Marathon. Oh, I'm probably out on this because jungles have spiders, yep. snakes, yep, leopards, oh, trees yeah. that will entangle you and eat you, flowers that indeed. if you touch, you have like strange orgasms. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, sold. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, uh, what's so weird about it? Because it happens every time It does time take I place in the Amazon jungle. Oof. The word marathon doesn't exactly do justice. It is a seven-day, 137-mile trek through some of the most hellish terrain Mother Nature has to offer. Participants must face challenges like Jaguar Alley, a section of the race considered to be Jaguar territory. 
Oh, okay. Runner. I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> Jaguar Alley. Huh, is that where, where we ride in cars? No. Is that where women leap from the trees and try to mate with me? No, that's Cougar Alley. <laughs> oh, can I go there? <laughs> Uh, where runners are advised not to stray too far away from each other and are an armed guard stand watch at night. Although they have, there have yet to be any Jaguar attacks. So there's that huh. numerous competitors have spotted them. And a few people have even reported being stalked. Oof. Well, what happens is the person right next to you just kick him in the knee. Cause Richard, I don't know if you know this, you yeah, don't have to then, outrun the Jaguar. And then you lick your thumb and then you, Jamming in their butt, right? That's- yeah, no, yeah. If the jaguar attacks you, you stick your thumb in their butt, and it's like, Row! and then you get away. <laughs> <laughs> Although people in charge of the race do a good job making sure things are relatively safe, the jungle marathon is still a hellish journey that requires runners to constantly be on guard if they want to avoid getting stung and bitten by venomous insects and reptiles. Yeah, there's like the Amazon is like one of the last places in the world that like everything there is trying to kill you. It's like Amazon and Australia. Um, in 2012, only 11 contestants of the 60 who started were able to complete the race. Yeah, any kind of like stuff like because like you know you're going across like waters and stuff where there's like you know crocodiles or other kind of like predators in the water. Yeah, and that's like well, I'm just thinking like it's hot, it's humid. There's bugs, there's snakes. Well, and it's, it's a lot. It's thick brush, so like you're constantly going to be getting cut by all that. And you never know, like you're going to grab a vine to pull down, and yeah, it's not a, a vine, it's a snake, or it's a a lizard, or it's a tail of a jaguar. Like yeah. I don't like I don't even like walking through like timber and stuff where we're from in summertime. Like, well, that's because you attract ticks. Like I don't know, true. like Jessica Rabbit. You're like, yeah, hey, they do boys. Like me. Who wants to suck my blood? Yeah. Come get it's it. Like your, it's like your legs put on dresses and they're like. <laughs> yeah. And I spray myself nah, nah, too. Nah, 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 nah. Worst thing is like, you're like, man, my ball itches and you scratch it. And it's like, what's that bump? Is it cancer? And it's like, oh, nope, just a tick. Oh, oh Lyme disease. Lyme disease. <laughs> <clears throat> Richard, I don't feel good. Oh God, you got the Rocky Mountain spotted fever again. Don't you? Yep. Yep. That's why I was no, going to but- say. You know, now you say that, I've been really getting into John Denver. <laughs> oh, God, that's the sign. Colorado. <laughs> um, this one seems kind of interesting. This is called the Dakar Rally. The Dakar Rally is a 3,000-mile race. Uh, used to be between Paris and Dakar. It was moved to South America in 2009. But contestants are allowed to compete with pretty much any land vehicle of their choosing, including custom cars, trucks, motorcycles, and quads. The off-road race lasts two weeks, and although it's open to anyone who has a, sp- has a sport license, it is not for the faint of heart. So it's like the wacky races. Ooh, or a um, well, a cannonball run. Yeah. But I always like, like it. To- in I would the, like to like do the cannonball in the run off road. Yeah. You know, the, I think they stopped doing the cannonball run because like they used to do it like in uh like in Europe where like, there's not really much of a like speedometer, like speed traps and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And like people died because they'd be in like these luxuriously cars doing like 250 miles an hour. Whew. Yeah. Those cars That's are bad. a lot. It probably wasn't 250, but it was like, you know, 150, 180 consistently. So basically you can make any kind of thing you want as long as it's a ground vehicle <clears throat> and compete in this race. So that's why I'm saying it's like the wacky, wacky races. You can have a rocket car. Yeah. Be like, oh, I'm going to take off in my rocket car. <laughs> um, since its inception in 1978, the Dakar Rally has claimed more than 50 lives. Oh, well, I mean, if you don't hook that rocket booster up right and it explodes i mean it's gonna happen people have died of dehydration heat stroke heart attacks or a combination of all, all three. Oh shoot they're not even dying from car wrecks no which is often the case if a contestant happens to get completely lost mm. um at this year's event 10 people were injured at the start of the race when an out of control car went careening into the stands what happened yogi i don't know boo boo our picnic so, basket like, car just went off the road. Yeah, even watching it, you get hurt. I don't know, man. 
I mean, like, I feel like that would be something I'd want to watch just to see like the kind of cars and vehicles that sh- shit that people come up with. But well, it sounds like you'd want to do like the pre-race look, but once the race takes off, because it sounds like it's damish, dan- dangerous to be a spectator, even when they're racing, like you just kind of look at it and be like, those are cool. Now I'll watch on TV. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, though. Of the ones you listed, the only ones that I think we could compete in and be successful would be the sauna one. I think we I think we would crush it because we just like sit and like chit chat. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, hey, it's hot here. I'm going to take my I'm going to take my towel off. And I'm going to be like, uh, but then I'll be the only one in a towel because all the other dudes will already be naked. Well, when in Rome, we're in Finland. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, not really. Whole yeah, lot I've, of miles between Finland. I've, <laughs> I've only done like a spa thing once. And like there is something like like your body like feels kind of like, you know, it feels good to be in a sauna. And it's one of those things like I like I said earlier, like, you know, me and my wife being in a sauna would be nice, but like it'd be really weird to be in a sauna with a bunch of dudes naked. The only other one that seemed kind of plausible is the bog, the bog snorkeling championship. Oof, bog, though. Yeah, that's like big catfish, alligators, anacondas. Well, this it takes place in Wales, so I don't think you have to worry about. I don't think you have to worry about like getting eaten by a crocodile because you're up yeah. north. I don't but think they, yeah. the the problem the problem there is is like. That water's probably like freezing cold. Yeah. I mean, you'd be in a wetsuit. Like, it wouldn't be comfortable, but. So you're like swimming through like dirty, cold water. Yeah. Oh, and if you like, you sneeze and you inhale too quick. Uh, Uh, It's in my mouth. Is this how I get superpowers? Oh, God. Oh, God. I swallowed (laughs) it. I swallowed it. (laughs) Oh, fuck that. This and the bog. In all, the bog championship also includes a five mile run and a 12 mile mountain bike ride. Oh, that's like an Ironman competition. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Ex- yeah. Except the swimming part is you're fucking in freezing cold swamp water. Yeah. Like we get to the, like the running part, we get done stretching. Like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I thought this was just the water part. You come out in like flippers. And- <laughs> <laughs> I'm already winded. Just putting this stuff on. <laughs> where's the sauna the tube <laughs> um so yeah th- that was that was the list of all the weird oddball kind of things i have i like that um, that was fun i like kind of going through like those kind of weird like it's almost like we should set these shows up as like uh you know like they have the uh wide world of sports from back in the day like we need to come up with oh, some yeah. of these kind of things where it's just like yeah. wide world of bros or something. I don't know. We'll have to workshop it. Um, there actually, you know what? There is one more I will mention. This one takes place in Maine. It is the North American Wife Carrying Championship. I've heard of that one. That one seems like man, if like you like you like you pick them up and you're like, ugh, like you're just gonna hear on the other side. What was that? Nothing, babe. That they compete to win, quote, wife's weight in beer and five times her weight in cash. That'd be a lot of cash. Mm. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> My wife pokes her head down. What do you mean that'd be a lot of cash? <laughs> <laughs> Something you want to say, fatty big fat face? <laughs> no. <laughs> I hate it here. I want to go to the sauna. <laughs> uh yeah, I like those a lot. So I guess so it kind of tying in then so what do you have for some Richard's closing thought on this wide world of esports? Um, you know, actually I think the way to close this out is to say that I don't know what it is in human nature that makes us so competitive that we have to find like all these different ways to like be like, oh, I'm I'm better than you at this. I don't know what it is in our nature, in our human nature. I feel like at the end of the day, we just want to impress girl, right? We just want to impress a girl. And so this is our, all of these are just basically ways for us to be like, hey, look at what I'm good at. Hey, I am, I am the end goat of Excel spreadsheets. 
Well, yeah, I mean, think about now, like, we're not, like, that's, it brings us down to our most animalistic nature. Like, we're not fighting over land, you know, or our territory now as, like, yeah. alpha males or anything. Yeah. Instead, it's like, you know what? I'm the alpha male of Excel spreadsheets and an all-male sauna competition. <laughs> so, I, I guess to close this out, I would say that we are not as evolved as we think we are. Because at the end of the day, whether it's Excel spreadsheets or carrying a wife or snorkeling in a bog or playing or, you know, boxing and then playing chess or sitting in a sauna, at the end of the day, we are all the male silverback gorilla beating his chest to show that we are the dominant one. So we still have a, we still have a long way to go, but I think we'll get there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think we've added more competitions in the last twenty years, but probably we'll see. Well, uh, because we are the best podcast in the world and better than every podcast better out there. Better than every single yep. one. Fuck yep. you, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> asshole. Visit our website, we're at languagebros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languagebro. Email us at bros at languagebros.com. And we want to thank our two top fans that would be out there holding the sign saying, Sun up! Sun up! <laughs> that would be Wendy and Aaron. You guys are the number one at liking us. You're better than everyone else. No one is better than you. Yeah. After- Unless, and, pe- and, and other people should look at those two and be like, I could be better than them, and you should. You should yeah. be better than them. Because you know what? That tier in our Patreon, when Richard and I win the sauna competition, that's the first person we're going to hug coming out of uh-huh. there. Yeah. Yep. So they, Sean, nobody wants to be that person. <laughs> oh, Richard, I haven't even released and they both just left. They're like, <laughs> I felt a disturbance. <laughs> all right. Well, is there anything else before I close her out? No, I'm good, sir. All right. Well, that's all the bros have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a why. Be, be a why not. not. Dude, we could get language bromance towels and like robes when we go in there. I know. When we do the wacky races, we'll wear we'll wear the nothing but the ra- but the robes and the towels. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We could cross competition it. Mm, gold idea. That's how we distract the other drivers. Yeah. It's like, look at this. Just, What's that? Yeah. It's my mic. Ha <laughs> ha. Just like Cannonball Run. 